Hi there, I'm Ludwig and this is Data Platform Microlearning. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about the concept of data more normalization and to, to explain this concept in the simplest way possible. So if you ever went to your to any of the Microsoft typical regular training databases like AdventureWorks or AdventureWorks DW for data warehouses or maybe Adve Northwind or maybe AdventureWorks uh, LT for the lightweight version of that database. All of them has some information about the customers, right? If this is not a data warehouse uh, database, so the regular AdventureWorks or AdventureWorks LT, you may see something like this in here in this database. So you may see the um, sales LT address, sales LT customer and sales uh, LT customer address tables. Now, it doesn't make any sense to have three tables just to have the information about our customers. After all, if I wanted to, again, have everything about my, uh, or all of the information about my customers, all I would have to do is to just build a table with all of my customer data, right? And that should be it. Have the ID of the customer, just zoom it in a bit. So the ID of the customer, maybe their first name in here, maybe their last name in there, uh, maybe their address and so on and so forth, right? So I would build a table like that, I would have all of the information and it would work great, right? But the thing is that in some of the cases, I may also have a type of that address. So let's say that I have customers who have not only the main offices, but they also have the shipping locations. So the main office will be their billing address, while the uh, their warehouses, for example, like the physical warehouse will be their shipping location. So I'm um, billing uh, address A, and then I want to ship this information to the uh, to the location B, right? So how do I do that if I have table like this, Well, right? It will be very hard because I could just have this same uh, person, the same company name, for example, listed twice in my database with two separate different addresses. But then again, the IDs of those two clients would be also different. Again, two clients, those two rows would represent two different customers, right? So what I could do is I would denormalize that table. So I would split that table in order to disconnect those two information. So basically what I would do in here is I would have this table as one and this table as second one, right? So I would end up with something like this. I would have a customer table and then I would have the address table, right? So in here, I would just put the ID of my customer, their first name, last name, company name, blah, blah, blah. And then I could link to the address of that customer, right? Boom, and I'm linking to this address saying that the um, customer number one, their address is uh, address number one and number one address, all of the data is in here, right? Then again, once I'll, let's say, I have the customer who, uh, let's say that I have this very large corporate building where there are 100 different companies located, right? So what I can do is I can add those uh, 100 companies from 100 or from 2 to 102 and then link them to this corporate address, right? Saying that, all right, this customer is located here, this customer is located here and all of them, they are located in here. This is the very first step of denormalization because instead of having those addresses, the same address listed 100 times in here and if this address would change because the, na uh, the street was renamed or whatever else, I would have to update 100 rows, again, think about scale, think about updating 1 million rows every single time something like that happens. Instead of doing that, I'm just updating one row. And then on top of that, what happens is that whenever I'm asking the information, um, I'm asking SQL for the information about my customers without mentioning their address, the physical pages, the eight kilobyte pages that store the information in your database, they will not consist any information about those data, uh, about those addresses, regardless how wide this address table would be, all right? So this will be more efficient and this will be faster to query, this will be faster to update, my uh, information will be cleaner. But unfortunately, this normal form does not 
answer my query in here, right? Because right now, the, my problem that I started with, because right now, if I have one customer that has two addresses, what do I do in here, right? Well, let me just move this one away from the screen for a second. So again, I do have the customer number 103 who has two addresses. What do I do? Well, I cannot have the ID of the address one and the ID of the address two, right? I cannot have two different information in one column that would point to different locations. So this is exactly the reason why you're seeing here not just one, not like this, sorry, boom. Uh, you're seeing not just two tables in here, the address and the customer table, boom, but you also see the third one, the customer address. And if I was to query this third table, it contains, let me just remove the metadata like the uh, identifiers of the rows and the modification date, you see that I have the customer ID and the address ID that are connected and one additional column of the address type. And I can right away in here, I can see the customer the 29503 who has two different addresses. So one customer has the main office located under address 541 and shipping address which is located under 3 Two, right? So again, I can just pull that information from my database in order to see all of the info, right? So of course, um, I, this is the micro learning. I'm looking at this, uh, the watch is already six minute episode. So let's just uh, skip that to the demo. If you want me to build the actual query in here, let's just do that in the next episode. But what I want to show you is exactly this part in here. So boom, the customer address is the table that will contain only three columns in my case. So I will have information about the ID of the customer that comes from here. I will have the information about the address ID that comes from here. And then come back in here. Uh, I will also have the address type, which will allow me to, uh, to store the information about my customer only once, about all of the possible addresses only once, and then whenever the address changes, I'll only once uh, update my one table. And if I want to connect these two, I do have the third table that will work like an interconnector or connector between those two different tables. So again, this is exactly how the data normalization works, right? Instead of having everything in one table, I will divide those tables into parts in order to query smaller, um, narrower tables. We already talked on data platform, micro learning YouTube channel about how those, um, uh, how this data is being stored, how the eight kilobyte pages work, what are extents, what are indexes, how they do interact. So make sure you subscribe to this channel. And in the very next episode, I'll just build an actual query that will combine those two, uh, those three, sorry, those three tables together. So if you want to see that episode, just, uh, Boom. If you want to see that episode, it should pop up in here and I will see you in that episode.